Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I will be a living sanctuary to you. The Spirit comes to live inside the disciples, to dwell with them, gives them the tools that they need for the, the healing of, of their world. It's an invitation for those of us who look for God to draw our gaze from the heavens down to the people among us. That's not just true for the disciples, but, but for us as well. Which is why we've decided to interview some of the folks in our congregation. Marcy, Renee, Kathy, Catherine, Nicole, to reveal God's light shining through them, the Spirit working through them. Come, let us witness together the tongues of flame dancing on each one of our heads. Hi, my name's Catherine Matar Hurlbut. Been in the congregation for many years. And I've been asked by Daniel to uh, have a conversation with him. The one we do is family studies and it's a broad-based interdiscipline that we've been able to uh, look at society and we look at self and we look at uh, um, equality or inequality. We've done uh, um, interdisciplines of uh, women's studies. I teach food and nutrition and there's a uh, portion of food security that we talk about. Uh, I teach um, parenting and we talk about uh, um, society and the um, ideal of, of uh, childhood and children and the, the different viewpoints that society has. It all starts with them. Then they can understand the, uh, the more uh, challenging theories if they can relate it back to themselves. I was in proximity with them so we could have a dialogue that was uh, meaningful and precise. We're on the, on the computer or in the uh, Google Classroom that I'm using, that platform. Um, there seems to be a, a delay and often there's a miscommunication. There's um, inequities in the system. Um, just in, in Wi-Fi, um, we know that uh, there's been gaps in their understanding and, and um, education that have come out clearer than ever before of understanding instructions and, and following through. Um, so um, the gaps were, were smaller 10 years ago and they seem to be wider now. Um, they are now more uh, I wouldn't say fearful, but they are more aware of the world per se. Um, when the pandemic first started, I got emails asking, hope everyone is well and doing well. And there was more concerned about um, health and safety than before. And of course, with the uh, um, countries and the variants, uh, many of the students have family elsewhere who are concerned about their uh, livelihood, their um, uh, their health and their conditions. They probably are, are um, hoping like we all do, are hoping for more um, peaceful times, hoping for... We do, uh, uh, at our school, we do a lot of um, climate change um, programs and working on a, on a better earth and a better uh, society, um, but becoming more aware of the inequ inequities of the world. Um, I see the divine in their compassion for each other, and I, I received some really compassionate emails when I told a few people at the end that I was not coming back for the last quad. Um, there was understanding, um, and few of the uh, um, students had experienced burnout throughout the uh, third quad, and so understood when I said, I'm, you know, finishing up my duties and then taking time for
for myself, and they understood that. So we as adults need to present a, a model, a path, um, guidance for uh, the next generation. We just can't sort of abuse the system and leave it for them to, to clean up. We do talk about life and that there's, there's hopefully more to life than what we physically can see and do and touch. And um, however you want to call it or, or, or label it or feel about it, um, it just comes back to respect. We have to get there. We have to get to self-actualization. And maybe as a, a community, we haven't got there yet. So that's what, uh, where the divine is, is actually uh, looking beyond ourselves, um, the actuality of what we have to take responsibility of what we've done to the earth and what we've done and um, take action.